A resistor is another very common type of load that a digital gate drives. A uh, resistor is an electrical, it's a passive electrical component or device that basically describes the relationship of the current to the voltage through it. Okay, so it's passive such that it doesn't require power to operate. And a resistor, it can be a, a real thing. It can't, you can go purchase resistors. But a resistor uh, or resistance is also a model of the way things behave. So you might have a, a motor, for example, and you want to try to model its behavior. Well, you might model its behavior with a resistor. Okay? So a resistor is both a component that, we actually, that actually exists, and it's also a method to model how the current is related to the voltage. So the governing law of how the voltage and current is related on a resistor is called Ohm's law. And Ohm's law is very simple. It is V is equal to the current times <coughs> the resistance. Resistance is an electrical property of a resistive component. And the way it works is in a passive device, you're going to define two terminals, and there's going to be a positive and a negative, and that we'll call that VR. Okay, so that's the, the voltage across the resistor. In a passive device, the current always flows from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. So it's defined to be the current is positive when it flows from the positive to the negative of the voltage. It's not going to it's not defined to flow that way. If it did flow that way, it would just simply be negative. But in this situation, that's how you define the current. <coughs> okay? Now, the units of a of resistance are ohms. Okay? So this resistance right here is ohms. Okay? And you might suspect that if you broke that down, it's going to be uh, volts per amps. Okay? So simply, <coughs> if you divide it there. So the neat thing about this is that when you have a resistor, if you know the resistance value, which is it's very easy to measure and it's usually given, you can, if you know the voltage, you can determine how much current's flowing through it. Or if you know the current flowing through it, you can determine how much voltage is flowing through it. So resistors are very easy when they're to analyze by themselves. And uh, we can use Ohm laws, Ohm's law to dictate what the, or to find what the current's going to be when we're driving it with the digital gate. So let's first take a look at, uh, let's look at driving a resistor when it's configured as what we call a pull down. Okay? So this would be a situation where we had a, let's just use a, a digital gate as a buffer again. And instead of driving another gate, we're actually going to drive a resistor. And I, I call it a pull down because it is connected to ground. So this right here is the output voltage of the gate. And we're going to have a resistance. Let's just make up something uh, 300 ohms. <coughs> and what we're concerned about is what's the current through the resistor? We really care what this current is because this current is the load. So th this resistor is the load. The current through the resistor is what the load is pulling, and that current is going to come from the transmitter. So whatever we calculate for the current going through the resistor, that is coming out of the transmitter. So we need to make sure that we don't violate any maximum current specifications. Now, you say, well, all right, so I know that Ohm's law tells me how much current will flow through it based upon the voltage I have across this resistor. So I could define the voltage across it as VR, and it'll be this terminal to this terminal. So that's great. The only thing about this is how do I know what the voltage is? Well, the voltage across that resistor is going to be dictated by the output voltage of the transmitter. So in the simplest case, and actually the worst case, what we could say is what, are, what is the voltage when you drive a resistor with a digital gate. Well, it's going to be two things. It's either going to be a zero or it's going to be a one. So what voltages do those correspond to? Well, typically what you could say is you could talk about what technology you have the digital logic gate trans or implemented in. Let's just say we had a CMOS buffer <coughs> driving a resistor. And let's just say, for example, that the power supply was 3.4 volts. What that means is that a high on the output, let's go as VO is equal to high, is equal to a 1, that's going to output plus 3.4 volts. So when I'm driving a high, I'll have 3.4 volts right there. When I'm driving a low, or a 0, that will output 0 volts. 
So I actually have to analyze this circuit twice, once for when it's driving a high and once for when it's driving a low. Now you can, you can tell that one of the situations when you drive a low is going to be trivial, but let's just solve it for both. So let's go ahead and driving a high. If you think about driving a high, here's what the situation is. The buffer outputs plus 3.4 volts. It is then crossed a resistor which has 300 ohms. That 3.4 volts is coming out of the transmitter. It's right here. And it is relative to, plus or minus, 3.4 volts relative to ground. It's important voltage is always uh, with respect to two points. And for Ohm's law to work, it's only the voltage across the resistor. In this circuit, it's really trivial that it's only across there. But when you look at other com more, more complicated circuits, you have to isolate it. Okay, so the current's going to come down to here, and that's going to be IR. We're going to solve for that, and that's actually exactly what IO is, because the load will take whatever it wants. So I need to solve this using Ohm's law. So I come over here, and I say, okay, here I go. V is equal to IR. The voltage across the resistor was 3.4 volts. The current is to be determined, and the resistance was 300 ohms. So now I just simply say IR is equal to 3.4 over 300. And that is now equal to, turns out to be 0 0.011 amps, also called 11 milliamps. So this now is IO when driving a high, we call it IOH. And that's what the resistor is going to pull out of there. <coughs> so we need to make sure that we, we can supply 11 milliamps. So once we calculate that, we could go back and look at the IO max specification of this driver and say, are we able to provide that? Another way of doing it would be to say, I have 20, let's say the IO max spec was something. Let's say that IO max was equal to 25 milliamps. You could then dictate what the size of resistor would ever be <coughs> that would not violate that, and then make sure that you were always larger than that. OK, let's also look at the other case, which is actually kind of trivial. And that's when you're driving low. <coughs> so when you drive a low in CMOS, what's going to do is it's going to put out VO is equal to 0 volts. And so then you're going to have this right here. You're going to have your 300 ohm resistor. And you can tell right away. So this is zero volts because it's ground. This is zero volts. So your plus or minus voltage is zero volts. Well, V is equal to IR. If zero is equal to IR, so divide zero by resistance, doesn't really matter. I is equal to zero. So there's no volt or there's no current that flows. So in this situation, I O low would be zero amps. And that makes sense. It's when you have a resistor. If you don't have any voltage, there's no current flow. OK, so that is driving a pull down resistor. Let's take a look at what we would do if we had a pull up resistor. So a pull up resistor is kind of the same analysis, except that the configuration is a little bit different. So this is going to be a pull up resistor. And what this looks like is you'd have your gate. And the resistor now is up here, and it's going up to VCC. So now what we want to do is we want to figure out what is the current. And in this situation, the current is going to flow from VCC down into the device. And we want to try to figure out what that current is going to be. OK, so let's do an example where we said this is 5 volt CMOS. So VCC is equal to 5 volts and ground is equal to zero. That means this VC is going to be five volts. And then let's just say that we had 100 <coughs> ohms here. So we want to calculate what is going to happen here. So let's start with driving a high. So I'm going to drive a high. The configuration is going to look like this. I'm going to have an output voltage. So VOH is equal to plus five volts. And then I'm going to have my resistor up to plus 5 volts. And I have 100 ohms. If I analyze that, I need to look at what is the voltage across this resistor. Well, this point is at 5 volts. This point is at 5 volts. So VR is going to be the difference between those. So it's simply 5 minus 5. That's 0 volts. 
So I actually have zero volts across that 100 ohm resistor when I'm driving a high. When I plug that into V is equal to IR, I've got zero is equal to I times 100, which doesn't really matter because there is no voltage across that 100 ohm resistor. So I have IO, we call it IOH, is equal to zero. Now this is an example where you have five volts over here. So you actually have a real voltage and you have a five volts over here, but it didn't matter that there were five and five. What really mattered was what is the difference in voltage across the resistor? What is the voltage across that resistor? Voltage is always with respect to two points. So you have to say, if I want to find what VR is, I need to look at this terminal and that terminal, subtract them, and that'll give me the voltage. Okay, let's do the same analysis now when driving a low and this one will actually be a little bit more interesting because it should have some current. So now I'm going to drive a low and the configuration is going to look like this. I have my pull up resistor and VCC is equal to 5 volts. It didn't change. I have 100 ohms and my VO, we'll call it VOL, is equal to 0 volts. And why is it 0? It's driving a low. It's CMOS. CMOS drives a 0 as the lowest voltage in the system. So what I have now is I want to find what is the voltage across the resistor? Well, at this point it's 5 volts, at this point it's 0 volts. So the actual drop is going to be 5 volts. So it's 5 minus 0, so I have 5 volts across that. Now I can plug this baby into Ohm's Law. So I go V is equal to IR. My voltage drop was 5. My current is what I'm solving for, and my resistance was given as 100. So I basically get I is equal to 5 over 100. And I can solve that and come up with uh, 0 0.05 amps, also called 50 milliamps. So that is what IOL would be when driving a low. Okay? All right, where does the current flow? It flows from this VCC pin down to and into the device, and ultimately will go in and then out into the ground. So that is how you analyze the current when you are driving resistors. There's a pull up and pull down configuration. And the key to this is making sure that you don't violate any of the output specifications for current on the transmitter.